Hey guys, Prickly Hedgehog here with another update on the tank system and uh, obviously some changes. Uh, tanks looking pretty good. Fish are still healthy, growing, uh, and occasionally breeding. The uh, two on the far right here frequently laying eggs, so on and so forth. So uh, we have another tank downstairs that's slowly transforming itself into something ready for. Uh, Maybe a couple of these guys to pair up and maybe get some uh, some baby discus out of it. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be an experiment. Uh, tank's always an experiment. It's always changing. It's always, you know, in a state of flux, in some way, state of form. So, what I wanted to talk to you about today, of course, is chemicals and why chemicals and chemical supplements are kind of important for the planted tank. I should stress before I begin that the substrate which you see in this tank, um, has multiple layers, sand, gravel, and uh, clay layer, which has uh, a lot of nutrients and also provides a good rooting uh, material, I guess, for the, for the plants themselves to cling to uh, and suck up nutrients. But in addition to that, uh, because it's a closed system, and I've said this before, closed systems are devoid of uh, some of the nutrients that plants need to, uh, to grow, and the water itself is therefore devoid of those things. And... Uh, uh, all of the fish and plants benefit from having uh, a certain amount of micronutrients uh, re being replenished or put back into the into the system to ensure that the that general health of the water, the general health of uh, the aquatic life, <coughs> is ensured. So, how do we do that? Well, obviously, there's a range of chemicals. Um, now, I don't want to promote one brand over another. I have two different brands here: Seachem uh, and their Flourish range. They've had very good success with their product. Uh, uh, and I've got Kent uh, Marine on the right hand side here too so I'm not being endorsed by any one of these particular companies um, but I have had, like I said, I've had good luck with uh, with both of these these companies and Seachem in particular I've used um, for several years now so, so what kind of chemicals do I need to put in? Well, obviously a lot there's all sorts of different uh, kinds of chemicals when you're using RO water I should stress that first if you're using RO water uh, not tap water, you are going to be uh, devoid of certain chemicals uh, that the tank, the tank needs and that the, the uh, fish and the plants particularly need. Um, so uh, phosphorus, potassium, nitrogen, iron, iron probably being the most important for a planted aquarium, those things are going to be absent, you know, or in low, in low quantities in a, in a uh, RO uh, system. So you need to be able to replenish those. How much I use is going to be dictated by obviously the size of the tank and um, the number of plants that I have. Uh, you know, a heavily planted tank like this one is going to absorb more, you know, more chemicals than a uh, uh, a large tank with only three plants in it. So you have to factor those things in before you uh, start throwing chemicals into the tank. Work out approximately what you need. Some of that's going to be a little bit of an experiment, um, but but most of it's going to be common sense. Uh, based on the instructions on the uh, on the bottoms themselves, um, I use uh, for these chemicals on the right hand side. I'm going to be using about a capful to two capfuls, maybe once or twice a week. Uh, that's going to be plenty, uh, generally speaking. So, uh, overdosing can lead to issues, and uh, you know, uh, I always verge on the side of caution. Probably less is better. Um, Okay, so let's go. What well, we've got, like I said, you can see phosphorus, potassium, nitrogen, excel, iron is missing. Um, and I can go that way with um, chemicals being separated here and putting them in myself. Or if I'm feeling lazy and uh, I'm fairly new to this product, uh, I can go uh, this way um, with uh, Flourish, the complete or comprehensive supplement, which has a list down the side of pretty much all the chemicals that you need, including the ones that are uh, listed on the side, so you wouldn't need to probably double up here. Um, but you've got everything from uh, you know, calcium right through to zinc in this, in this list, even a little bit of copper, which normally would be bad for the tank, but it's in very um, micro amounts. So uh, if you were going to buy one, <laughs> this is probably the way to go. I think these retail between 40 and 50 bucks online for um, two liters, but it treats 800 gallons for four to six months, which is not a bad investment. Uh, it's going to last you a long time, especially in a smaller size tank. So if you're using more than that, you're probably overdosing. 
Uh, maybe uh, being a little overzealous there. So, so here we go. Um, chemicals, yeah, you need them. <laughs> uh, most of the plants are going to absorb through the root system, but you, there are plants that don't have um, roots um, and still need some of those um, materials. Iron being, uh, again, the most important that, you, that I've mentioned, and uh, uh, that's really, really important for the, for the plants to, uh, to be healthy and for uh, sustained growth, um, good leaf development, um, those kinds of things, the stem development. When the plants are not doing so well, it's either a lack of light uh, and, a lack, and or a lack of iron. Uh, usually it's a lack of light, uh, and you've got the plants that need uh, um, uh, more, more light to grow successfully. Um, if they're just rotting, it could be it's some sort of chemical issue. So I don't want to get into that too much because it's, it's, it's never easy just to say, hey, it's one thing or another. Um, but very broadly speaking, um, the right amount of light and then there are usually iron as a supplement. If the plants are growing, but they still look a little weak or the leaves are a little yellow, um, maybe not forming properly, then it's probably a lack of iron uh, and or other chemicals. Um, and uh, there's a lot of information online about this, about what, uh, what symptoms might be indicative of a, of a particular problem or symptom of a particular problem. So, so do your research before you uh, start throwing in chemicals willy-nilly. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so wobbly there with the camera. Um, the other thing to think about too is that uh, remembering that the, the chemicals above that I mentioned before, these are micronutrients. And a stress, micronutrients, <laughs> not macro, because if you start throwing in macronutrients, which you'll find in, say, outdoor fertilizers or potted plant uh, fertilizers, say for the indoor plant, if you start throwing those in a in a tank like this, you're going to have a big problem. A lot of those uh, um, fertilizers contain a lot of nitrogen, designed for the outdoors. Um, and uh, they're not suitable for a uh, planted aquarium. You will have uh, a green explosion, I would imagine, if you started throwing in anything that's designed for pot, plot, uh, excuse me, potted uh, plants or outdoor plants. So, so word of caution right there. If you've got those chemicals around and you're thinking that maybe I can, you know, just put in a tiny amount, no, don't do it. You will, uh, you will rue the day that uh, you did that. So uh, the Chemicals above from uh, Seachem and also from Kent Marine, uh, those are designed specifically for aquatic environments and uh, that's really important that you, you have the right material to throw in. Don't, don't compromise because you will, you will have a disaster on your hands. It's already a big enough uh, chemistry soup in here and you don't want to, you know, basically destroy your pristine environment with, with uh, products that aren't suitable. Uh, for this environment, and uh, I, you know, I can't stress that enough. So, all right, well, enough, uh, enough talk. I hope that that makes sense. Like I said, it's a closed system, so you do need to replenish um, the chemicals that, uh, in, in in nature, nature itself would be replenishing uh, either through uh, uh, chemicals washing off the earth, or through or coming from the sky itself. So, uh, small micronutrients are, are available. Um, and uh, in a closed system, when you're using RO water, I stress again, RO, RO water typically doesn't have all the chemicals that you need uh, to sustain good life. Um, my tank here is not perfect. I've, I've got some algae and stuff like that growing in. I'm always uh, fighting that a little bit. Uh, it's probably from the large amount of light that I have in here. And uh, so you pick up stuff from other um, plants and things when you buy them. So sometimes you get... Uh, you know, I never used to have snails, and now I have snails everywhere. Uh, it, it's part of the system. Snails are not necessarily a bad thing. They're eating some algae. Uh, yeah, I get plant die-off. I get some uh, black algae that's kind of growing on here and there. But, you know, I snip it back. The plants are growing. Um, I'm fighting it. Whatever. You know, overall, the, uh, the health of the tank is pretty good. The fact that the discus are breeding is, uh, is a pretty good sign of health. And uh, I keep, you know... A meandering eye on my pH levels and stuff like that. I don't worry too much, as long as things are growing and the fish look healthy. Then I know that basically uh, the chemistry is okay. So as long as I keep doing what I'm doing. All right. So yeah, enough babble. I hope uh, this uh, makes some sense for people that are watching and are new to the hobby. And uh, 
I guess as they say in the business, tank on, and I'll see you another time. Cheers. Thanks for watching.